This is a demonstration of IP Pulse. IP Pulse is a connectivity status monitoring tool. As you can see right here, we have a list of IP addresses that we're going to monitor. And you can define that list right here by pressing Define Targets. As you can see, you can enter the IP version 4 address and other information and add it to the target list. You can also import it from a file or you can export your current list to a text file for re later re-import. You can also generate a range of IP addresses right here if you wish. So once you have decided what IP addresses you're going to monitor, use the editor, create them, and close it. Next you want to look at settings. Settings has a large variety of different things you can use to, to uh, test the IP addresses to make sure you can still reach them. First of all, you have a primary test. The primary test can be done with a ping or a TCP port connect and disconnect. You have a number of packets to send with ping and the packet length is defined here. This is the timeout, in other words, how long you want to wait for the packet the ping packet to go out and return or how long you want to wait for the connection, the TCP port connection. If you select TCP port connection you can set the port right here. Um, oftentimes you can set port 80 or whatever is operating on the target. You also have a secondary test that you can use if you wish. It can be a TCP port connect or an SNMP status. Often it's just disabled. You can define user OIDs for SNMP that you can gather the information and record it. And then you can define failure criteria right here. In this case we're accepting failures only from the primary test and these things have to do with trigger points and counters. Right here you can define what the failure alerts are. You can log things, you can beep the computer, play a wave file, log only the failures, log them to a web page, send email notifications if you wish, or launch a program on failure. If you choose email notifications you can define who the email goes to and you can define more than one target if you wish by adding them here. You also have different options for authentication because some email servers require you to authenticate before you can actually send email and in this case we can support the start TLS methods right here and also simple basic authentication right here. You can also view the email log file and send a test message right here. There's also something called remote control where you can control it remotely. This is disabled by default and you can just define pass and fail colors there. Now back to program control you can set these settings and save them for later. You have scheduling to run it on startup, the test cycling control, usually it just cycles through all these then goes back to the top. This defines the time between each test and this defines the time that it waits between each cycle. This affects DNS resolution of IP address to host names and this defines checking for a new version from our website and this allows you to reset results counters. So we're going to go ahead and start it right here. To run IP Pulse, simply press the Run button right here. As you can see, since we asked it to translate IP addresses to host names, the host name appears in this column. The test status, whether it be pass or fail, appears in this column and the pass count and fail count appear there and the last pass or fail times appear there. This one will fail and you'll be able to see fail right here. Note that we show a, a green background which you could change in settings for pass and fail has a red background. So after it's finished with this it will cycle back and go to the top. So as you can see it's now begun to do the ping of the next pass right here. So we're going to go ahead and hit stop right now. As you can see there's a report option that comes up here and you can save the report. It saves it as a text file. 
Now, if you're interested in needing some help, we do have quite an extensive help file, as you can see right here. Things like revision history, quick start, how to get going, which is kind of what we've just gone over. And then it goes through all the various options with the buttons, controls, appearance, logging, how to view it, remote control, command line options. So as you can see there's a generous help file that explains a lot of information about how to get started with IP Pulse and what it's used for. There's also more information here, news, you can view the logs directly, print or save the results and auto size the column widths right here. As you can see it does that. So that's an overview of how you use IP Pulse.